This video is called Human with Active Route, and it shows how Active Route can help with your interactive routing. I'm using the same design as in the Human versus Auto Router video created by Dave Jones and posted on his EEV blog. Dave's video illustrates that auto routing technology produces results that really can't compare to human interactive routing. And in fact, auto routing the whole design in this case produce useless results. In AD 17.0, Altium introduced Active Route. And it's not an auto router. Rather, it's intended to assist the interactive routing of signals. And therefore, this video is called Human with Active Route, not Versus Active Route. With Active Route, the bar for success is answered by this question. Did Active Route make the interactive routing process faster while maintaining the human standard of quality? My initial attempts with AD 17.0 reveal the bug related to rotated rounded rectangle pads, which created some shorts. After that bug was fixed for the 17.1 release, I tried again. This video illustrates that result. Let me start with what I did to set up the design. Active route is for signal routing, not for power and ground. So I needed to start with the power and ground already routed. I removed all the routing, including the fan outs, because I wanted to route as much as possible without fan outs or extra vias. Then I rerouted the power and ground as if I was doing it for the first time, meaning without the knowledge that some places needed to be modified to produce room for signal routes. It looks similar, but not exactly the same as manual routing. I did put in the fan out vias for the serial clock lines because it was clear the routing had to run on the backside to connect all the SOIC devices. Now we are going to use Active Route for routing each of the displays. Select the connections using Area Select with the Alt key, and then press Active Route. It will route on the selected layers. You can see it routed both on the bottom and the top layers. Select the connections again, press Active Route. Note the quality. I think it's pretty good. There's some wraparound, but that's necessary to route as much as possible. I'm going to hold down the Shift key and select two groups of connections, because I didn't want to try and route the ones that were obviously blocked going from left to right. Again, select all the connections here. I think they'll all route, or a good percentage of them. Well, almost all of them. I just go down the line and route groups together for these displays. See what they look like. It's looking pretty good. Here there's a left to right connection that won't route, so I'll select two groups again. There we go. I'm thinking here, maybe I should route both of these together because there's no uh, no display to the right and I can't block anything by, by doing that. And it takes a few seconds longer to route, but uh, we'll see, it's probably worth it. I'll just route them all together as much as possible. All right, so it took just under two minutes to route all of these. After using After Route, I manually routed the rest of the design. It required some changes to the power and ground routing and moving some of the vias. I also moved some routes around on the bottom side to maximize the ground plane and to ensure all the ground vias had good connections. The total time for routing the rest of the signals was 29 minutes and then an additional 4 minutes for working on the plane. Comparing the original Micro Nixie display design with the one using Active Route, it is clear the quality of the Active Route results are very good and it looks like manual routing. It has less vias and total route length compared to the original. In conclusion, this is a good example of using Active Route as part of the interactive routing tool set to reduce the routing time and to get high quality results.